So in the series of read aloud series, Indian Economic Development, I'm reading from here. It's a textbook for class 11th. I have finished the unit one, which comprises of two chapters. The unit one is development policies and experience right from 1947 to 1990 and in the first chapter we talked about Indian economy on the eve of independence so in that we talked about all this and then chapter 2 we talked about Indian economy 1950 to 1990 <clears throat> in that we talked about the goals <clears throat> of five-year plans, agriculture, industry and trade, trade policies and import substitution. So now we are doing unit two, which is economic reform since 1991. And in the unit two, we have only one chapter, that is chapter three, which is liberalization, privatization and globalization and appraisal. In that, we are going to discuss about the background, and what is liberalization, what is privatization, and what is globalization, and Indian economy during reforms and assessment. Chapter 3, liberalization, privatization, and globalization, and appraisal. So when, once we finish with the chapter, we will understand what was the background of the reform policies introduced in India in 1991 and we'll also understand the mechanism through which reform policies were introduced. The government initiated a variety of policies which fall under three heads that is liberalization, privatization and globalization. So let's just talk about liberalization. As pointed out in the beginning, rules and laws which were aimed at regulating the economic activities became major hindrances in growth and development. Liberalization was introduced to put an end to these restrictions and open up the various sectors of the economy. Though a few liberalization measures were introduced in 1980s in areas of industrial licensing, export-import policy, technology upgradation, fiscal policy and foreign investment reform policies initiated in uh, 1991 were more comprehensive. So in 1991, there were more comprehensive uh, reform policies that came in. Let us study some important areas such as the industrial sector, financial sector, tax reforms, foreign exchange markets and trade and investment sectors which received greater attention in and after 1991 deregulation and industrial sector so what so sorry deregulation of industrial sector now in india regulatory mechanisms were enforced in various ways first industrial licensing under which every entrepreneur had to get permission from government officials to start a firm, close a firm, or to decide the amount of goods that could be produced. Second, private sector was not allowed in many industries. Third, some goods could be produced only in small-scale industries. And fourth, controls on price fixation and distribution of selected industrial products. The reform policies introduced in and after 1991 removed many of these restrictions. Industrial licensing was abolished for almost all but product categories, ca alcohol, cigarettes, hazardous chemicals, industrial explosives, electronics, as aerospace and drugs and pharmaceuticals. The only industries which are now reserved for the public sector are defense equipments, atomic energy generation, and railway transport. Many goods produced by small scale industries have now been de reserved. In many industries, the market has been allowed to determine the prices. So now we come to the financial sector reforms. So we finished with uh, we, we starting with we we talked about deregulation 
of industrial sector and now we talking about we are talking about financial sector reforms financial sector includes financial institutions such as commercial banks investment banks stock exchange operations and foreign exchange market the financial sector in india is controlled by the reserve bank of india rbi you may be aware that all the banks and other financial institutions in india are controlled through various norms and regulations of the rbi the rbi decides the amount of money that the banks can keep for themselves fixes interest rates nature of lending to various sectors etc one of the major aims of financial sector reforms is to reduce the role of rbi from regulator to facilitator of financial sector this means that the financial sector may be allowed to take decisions on many matters without consulting the rbi the reform policies led to the establishment of private sector banks indian as well as foreign foreign investment limit in banks was raised to around 50% those banks which fulfill certain conditions have been given freedom to set up new branches without the approval of the RBI and rationalize their existing branch networks though banks have been given permission to generate resources from india and abroad certain managerial aspects have been retained with the RBI to safeguard the interest of the account holders and the nation foreign institutional investors that is fii such as merchant bankers mutual funds and pension funds are now allowed to invest in indian financial markets tax reforms tax reforms are concerned with the reforms in government's taxation and public expenditure policies which are collectively known as its fiscal policy There are two types of taxes direct and indirect. Direct taxes consists of taxes on incomes of individuals as well as profits of business enterprises. Since 1991 there has been a continuous reduction in the taxes on individual incomes as it was felt that the high rates of income tax were an important reason for tax evasion. It is now widely accepted that moderate rates of income tax encourage savings and voluntary disclosure of income the rate of corporation tax which was very high earlier has been gradually reduced efforts have also been made to reform the indirect taxes taxes levied on commodities in order to facilitate the establishment of a common national market for goods and commodities Another component of reforms in this area is simplification in order to encourage better compliance on the part of taxpayers many procedures have been simplified and the rates also substantially lowered so here let me just uh, talk about the the GST now so we've come with a new concept the are indirect taxes which are called the goods and service tax which we're going to study later in another chapter but uh, we now call the indirect taxes just to bring a uniformity on the GST so but in 19 we are talking about the 1991 reform so this is how it was so now we're going to talk about the reform in the of foreign exchange so foreign exchange reforms the first important reform in the external sector was made in the foreign exchange market in 1991 as an immediate measure to resolve the balance of payments crisis the rupee was devalued devalued against foreign currencies this led to an increase in the inflow of foreign exchange it also set the tone to free the determination of rupee value in the foreign exchange market from government control now 
more often than not markets determine exchange rates based on the demand and supply of foreign exchange the next subheading we are talking about trade and investment policy reforms so reforms here in trade and investment so liberalization of trade and investment regime was initiated to increase international competitiveness of industrial production and also foreign investment and technology into the economy the aim was also to promote the efficiency of the local industries and the adoption of modern technologies in order to protect domestic industries india was following a regime of quantitative restrictions on imports this was encouraged through tight control over imports and by keeping the tariffs very high these policies reduced efficiency and competitiveness which led to slow growth of the manufacturing sector the trade policy reforms aimed at number 1 dismantling quantitative restrictions on imports and exports and second reduction of tariff rates and third removal of licensing procedures for imports import licensing was abolished except in the case of hazardous and environmentally sensitive industries quantitative restrictions on imports of manufactured consumer goods and agricultural products were also fully removed from april 2001 export duties have been removed to increase the competitive position of indian goods in the international